Welcome back to episode 20 of the Catch Mark Sportsnet podcast. I'm your host, Zach Swigel, joined by my colleagues, Scott DeCamp, Devant, the sleepless wonder. Yeah, that's for sure. Did you get any sleep sleep this weekend? I was going to say. Not much. Zero. Covering wrestling? Yeah, it's more wrestling. It's a 24 hour deal. It looked more like a dance party, honestly. Oh, man, that was a. It was a lot because I was doing our work, and then I also picked up an assignment for the MHSA covering the girls tournament. So <laughs> I had to I had to interview fourteen girls state champions he's and not, track them all down. He's not working enough. He decides he wants to work some <laughs> yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Great idea. <laughs> right. Yeah. Less sleeps better. No one ever accused me of being intelligent. Uh, yeah, that's true. Come on, Scott. Come on. <laughs> and then our, our fearless leader, Brent Rath. Morning. Today we're joined by a, by a pretty special guest, a North Muskegon native. Michigan State basketball graduate player, alma mater, the whole nine yards. Your name, thank you so much for joining us, Drew. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I think, I think we're kind of in for a special treat. We don't get we don't get uh, you know people to come back from uh, from the conference very often. You know, we don't we don't get a ton of those those stars. Not to your level, at least. So <laughs> we, we appreciate it. Okay. Well, thanks. And yeah, again, I think it's uh, it's great what you guys are doing here. You know, covering the West Michigan Conference and uh, local sports here in West Michigan. Because um, like I was telling Scott earlier, you know. <laughs> When I was going through, you have a good game. You wake up the next day and you, you read the Muskegon Chronicle. For sure. You know, and now things have kind of things have kind of changed, and so uh, it's good that you guys are getting out there, putting stuff online, making these podcast videos. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Trying trying to tend to take a different approach to you know to covering sports, at least at least in our area. Yeah, for sure. Drew, you, the only way you could be better. I mean, you're a Sparty, so that's awesome, right? Yes, sir. West yeah. Michigan Conference guy. Mm-hmm. Man, you had to play for the Norsemen. I, I mean, North couldn't North you be a Wildcat, yeah. Drew? I mean, like, okay. I got my homework. My homework numbers got to come out there. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, We're yeah. West Michigan Conference fans here. Yeah, so. we are on Colby Street up here, so yeah, it's Whitehall. Like, <laughs> yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa now, right? whoa now, yeah, come yeah. on. <laughs> That's it. I'm walking out. <laughs> <laughs> Call it. It's done. It's done. done. <laughs> Who brought this guy? No. <laughs> no. To, to be honest with you, though, if, if you think about the schools, uh, I guess especially on the south side, we're all so close. Right? Oh, like, yeah. I mean, they all butt up to each other, you know, for the most part. So, you know, there's this big divide when it comes to when it comes to competition a lot of the time. But in reality, it's one of the same. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you get away and you get out to college and you get out to see the real world and the people that are from the Muskegon, West Michigan area, you, you kind of congregate around them. I made a lot of great friends from schools that were rivals. So, I mean, it's... They're oh, yeah. pretty much the same, I would say. Yeah. So. Yeah, hundred percent. Like you guys say, once you go on to, to college or wherever you're, I mean, I've met people from West Michigan, you know, on the other side of, of the planet, you know, over in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for yeah. Sure. yeah. Did you you seriously ran into a West Michigan person in Japan? I've been. I've run into people over there. You know, um, I was there for five years. And, that's uh, nuts. Yeah. That's true. When you're there for that amount of time, you know. Although that's it is crazy because I was in the service and stationed in Germany, and okay, when we were in Germany, I, I mean the first six months I was there I ran into a girl from Nowhere yeah, which went yeah. to Shelby High School and I was like what like how like all the way across the world hundreds of thousands of people in the service and like little tiny town in Nowhere so yeah, it does happen it's kind of crazy when it does though yeah uh oh Scott's got the uh, camera okay. out yeah. here you go Smart. glamour shots <laughs> <laughs> no that wasn't a selfie <laughs> <laughs> I know you probably thought it was though don't you Zach yeah it goes along with your check mark you yeah right keep, keep the, right there we go with that again Drew, do you have a blue check on Twitter? I do not. I do not. I'm not uh, official. You're not official. Scott, not official. Scott's the only official one sitting here. I told so you. Oh my gosh. Why do I have to keep telling this yeah, story over and over again? Yeah. Hey. Hey, that's somebody, yeah, somebody at the table is a little more jealous than the rest. So. Uh, we talk, Drew, we talk about, about our hometowns, where we're from. You talk a little bit about your experience at North Muskegon. Uh, I, you know, I've seen you at the games in the, in the last few months and and you're around. I know that you talk to, especially I've seen you at, uh, at the Nary with Chuck and, and Ken. Oh yeah. Um, you know you're still around for sure. Talk about your experience there and what North Muskegon means to you a little bit. Yeah, you know, uh, growing up there, it's a, uh, it, it's an interesting place. Um, you know, North Muskegon. It's a smaller school. So it's, it's actually it still is one of the smaller schools mm-hmm. in you know the current West Michigan Conference. I understand things are changing yep. you know, next year, so that's going to kind of that's going to change a lot. But um, yeah, it's a real, uh, it's very, you know, it's a real small town, tight knit community, sure. and uh, you know, so growing up, um, especially, you know, I guess you'd say as a as a as a taller kid, you know, you're like, oh, well, you know, <laughs> I gotta be on my you know, good behavior. 
you just stick yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Right. So. Uh, I never yeah. had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, you know, again, West Michigan, not only North Muskegon, but growing up in West Michigan, you go out and, you, you know, as you know, you go to overseas yep. and, and see places. It's it's a big world, and there's lots of beautiful stuff out there. But uh, I tell you what, like, West Michigan is a place of great, you know, it great is. natural beauty. Um, and you don't appreciate that, because all you want to do growing up is like, hey, I want to go out yeah. and, yeah. and, and see stuff, you know? Um, but, yeah, North Muskegon, you're 10 minutes away from uh, Lake Michigan and... Uh, and the dunes, and you know, you hop on 96, you're in you know, Grand Rapids in less than an hour, um, you go up north. I think we're, would you guys say like this area is like the edge of, of northern Michigan? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I like, think so. uh, that's funny. Don't you think so? I think everybody, it's, I think that's a great question though, because I think everybody has a different perspective about what up north yeah. means. Wasn't right? there a sign in White Cloud that says where the where the great white north begins and the pure waters flow or something like something that. like that. Is that in Baldwin or something like that. I think I think if you went north and you asked somebody from Shelby, are they up north? They'd say no, that's Hart. And if you went to Hart, they'd say nah, Pentwater. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's probably it's kind of funny. Relative. Yeah, I do feel like this is like where it gets. It is. It seems like time moves a little slower as soon as you get past northern, you know, northern Muskegon Whitehall area. You know, yeah, I, think, I don't know. It just seems a little different. I think yeah. it's great though that when someone like Drew goes away and sees the world. You know, plays a high level of basketball, meets a lot of people through that, and is on a big stage there. But then go, you know, you go overseas in Japan, and you still want to come back because, like you said, you you not that you didn't appreciate it when you're here, but it just puts things back in perspective. I think when you're able to get out and see the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And but you know, to you guys, to you guys' point, um, I guess I find out you you don't realize it growing up, and then you go to school or go to Michigan State, and then you know, a lot of kids from the east side of the state. Hey, where are you from? Oh, oh Muskegon. Oh, well, you're from up north, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Another thing they say too is, "Oh, football, Muskegon football." Yeah, because yeah. that's what Muskegon's kind of yeah. hangs its hat on. But as as we've seen, we have some good basketball players that have come through here. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Who was your coach in high school? It, it was Cookie, right? Yep, Jeff Cook. Yeah, oh, Cookie. Yeah. yeah, he's still around. <laughs> yeah, he's oh, still yeah. plugging away. Yep, still going. He's got the JV because they changed the rules, so you can't. Be a varsity coach and the athletic director. Yeah. Um. Now at North Muskegon, I don't know how common that is at other schools, but anyway, yeah. But um, Jeff was running the show. Um, coming up, but Rip was uh, Coach Ripster was always around the program too, and you know yeah. he was young enough at the time where he would he would come in and run. Uh, he would hoop with us, you know. Mm-hmm. He would run practice. Is is, and is Chuck any good? He okay. <laughs> <laughs> I put you on the spot. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but hey, you know, back in the day, we're talking now, yeah. right? thousands, like, you know, I was a freshman in 1999, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, now Chuck, he played at, uh, I believe he played at Hillsdale, so he played okay, like, at a pretty so high played, level in college. Yeah, that's play. Good. So Chuck's move in practice was, he would, you know, he would drive the lane, one, two dribble, and then the, the jump stop, you know, the long Oh, jump yeah, stop. the long one, would, yep. Yeah, he would cover a lot we'll of ground jump stop. Pump fake, try and get you in the air, and then draw contact and uh, and finish. So, you know, old that, man moves. That, <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. I mean, it worked. It yeah. worked against those high school kids. I'll tell you that. I yeah, think yeah. I've seen his sons do that, especially. Um, I think Eric's used that move before, yeah. if I remember correctly. But no, Chuck's a very good coach too. Not only oh, yeah. was he a good player, but I think he's one of the better coaches in the league. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. No, I totally agree with that as well. Uh, some some basketball players from your era that maybe stand out to you. You know, I don't know how much you remember from back then, or how uh, how how much you congregated with other schools or other players. But I assume you had your fair share of uh, you know of, of competition. I don't know if, you, if like how AAU worked back then, or you know how that worked. But just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, no, AAU is a lot different now. I think it's expanded to the point where um, no matter where you are, you know, skill wise, where you're trying to go, there's there's a team for you now. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't play AAU until I think my first AAU game was uh, it was with the Grand Rapids Storm and uh, that's crazy. Yeah, uh, I think I was uh, either a sophomore or a junior. Okay, and that was my, you know we went down to uh, to Toledo there. We, we took the road trip and uh, you know it was kind of like well hey who, you know who's this kid? Yeah, you know, and again I was real real skinny at the time, not you know still developing as a you know sixteen sure. seventeen yeah. year old. Uh, not super skilled, just kind of was was big and like was good around the basket and could defend defensively, could block shots. Yeah. You know? so, hey, who, who's this kid? You know, who, who's this kid going from up north? From you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> up north. I love yeah. it. Did any of the, any kids in the in the conference or in the area play with you on, on like that storm team or? 
Um, on the Storm team, it was uh, it was all over. We had a guy like Brian Snyder from Cadillac. Yeah. Okay. Jake, Jake Hogeboom, who was my uh, my roommate um, first year at, at Michigan State. No kidding. Who was yeah doing great things out with real estate. And I believe they that family yeah um, bought former Norton Pines right. That's Sporthouse. Yeah. 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 They're doing great things with that. Yeah. Yeah. So they've turned into what like like at the time the Speech Center in in the Anna was you know just just a bunch of courts and you could do all kinds of stuff That's with awesome. volleyball, yeah. basketball. Um, you know, one guy not in the conference, uh, being Callistus, you know, from Muskegon, yeah. he kind of we kind of had a, I guess a, a parallel a parallel path in uh, our our pro careers because it was always like we'd always come back. We were on we'd play on a summer league team here. We won a Heights League and you know we won uh, we won the White Hall League up here yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah, was, yeah, So I always enjoyed coming back in the summer and uh, you know he did as well. But we played on we played in uh, many of the same many of the same countries. Um, we've you know, because it's you get over there, the European circuit, or whatever. It's uh, it, it's not a big, you know, not a huge sphere of influence in terms of the you know the number of people. It's kind of a small world. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was always come back and talk. Oh yeah, you play against this guy. Yeah, yeah, in this country, in this, you know, what do you think about this? Um, so uh, yeah, he was kind of one that like, all the way through my pro career. That's kind of cool. Was a guy, especially yeah. somebody so close to home. You know. Yeah, for sure. All uh, right, mean, back back in your day. Did you like like do you remember who the conference title title holders were? Like do you remember like all the way through your career, your high school career? Well, uh, I'll tell you who won the conference. At least got a share of it. Yeah. Every, every year. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let me guess. I love yeah. it. Yeah. it was, I love it. The Jeff Cook led North Ski <laughs> yeah. who, who are your teammates? Who was who did you guys who you play with in those era? In that oh era? man, so uh, yeah, they brought me up uh, as a freshman. I remember my first varsity practice. Uh, they brought me in. Um, I think it was during the summer, and they had, like the varsity guys running, and um, just you know someone of that of that, because I was I was six foot eight and like, going into my freshman year, right? I, grew, I only I only grew an inch uh, or two, well, two in the program, you know, but, mm -hmm. um, between freshman and senior year. I guess I stopped growing when I was sixteen, but anyway, you know they brought me in as a, as an eighth grader, and again just like just you know big long blocking shots, yep. you know guys we're not used to. You know, playing as that, so I think Jeff Cook was like, "Yeah, we can, you know, we can put this guy out there and we can use him the first year." But that my first couple of years, um, the, we had another really good big, Steve Provosky, mm -hmm. who I had played against. That he kind of, we kind of, I think, developed each other's skills growing up because uh, we lived in the same neighborhood. We, you know, so we, I'd go over to Steve's house and uh, and we'd hoop, we'd play one on one, or, or there's some other guys that would play sometimes and. Uh, so I guess I developed at the time my go-to move that because he was a good shot blocker too. But um, a move I could I could use against him was like this turnaround, a little turnaround, uh, fake jump shot that I got pretty good at when I was young. Um, that didn't work in college, but uh, that's kind of <laughs> they're a little bigger there, aren't they? Yeah, yeah it's a little different. Yeah. I learned I learned pretty quick. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. that's life. Uh, so yeah, Steve Provosky, um, we had uh, Nick Marietti, yeah, um, Rod Melton, uh, Mike Washira. Nate Crossway was there. I, you know, I could, I, I do remember these guys. So yeah. I could, I could sit here talk for an hour about uh, high school basketball. For sure. Um, you know, after that, uh, then it was, um, you know, uh, Matt Brush, Garrett Cravaco transferred over from Reese Puffer, um, sophomore, junior year, and then uh, Gay Chern's Brody Seifert. And that was their starting five, uh, you know, senior year. Um, wow. Now you guys, did you get to the? Quarterfinals? We did, yeah, yeah. Was it Mark Weiss Gray? Is that the team? Yep. Scott. And who's your Michigan State team? Scott's a Spartan. He, he knows. Yeah. He knows. This, yeah. this guy, I'm telling you, Drew, he will he will pull it. You'll be like, who was the scoring leader in the state of Michigan in 1964? <laughs> yeah, he knows. Scott will go, He's Ben Hyatt. And you're like, what? Oh, yeah, and he averaged 23. Yeah. You know, like, I don't, I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, you know, pick up the milk at the store. I forget that, but I remember all this. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Well, this that's is how it goes. This is a great. This is a great environment for you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, it, it absolutely. brings up the table, hundred yeah. percent. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was Marquise Gray uh, in the state quarterfinals. Let me make sure, yeah. Yeah, and that game, uh, it, it came down to the wire. We we actually um, we had a good start, and our game plan was to get Quise in foul trouble because I'm feeling it's like, hey, you know, he goes for fans a lot. Yeah. You know, and we did. We got one, and then I think, okay. You know, I'm gonna. Have to, you know, this is a story for over. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but I, 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 uh, there might have been some controversy. Time. Maybe right? there might have been. You know, but hey, that's what everyone says, right? Well, hey, sure. this is blah blah blah. Yeah. Know? Well, anyway, um, we still we continued to draw contact, and you know, the refs they were like, hey, but I understand. You know, as an, as an, ad, as an adult now, you know, they let, they let the kids play. Um, 
But anyway, yeah, Quiz had a great game, and uh, he had, there were other, there were some guys, that, that was a good team, especially for, for Class C, or I don't know, I don't remember if it was Division, they had gone to Divisions yeah, at that point. I think it was C then, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it might have been Class C. Um, but yeah, it came down, it was a one or two possession game uh, at the end, and uh, in the end, Flint Beecher came out uh, victorious, and then, you know, they made it to the finals, and a loss to Brandon Cotton, oh, yeah. Yeah. Detroit the Porous, the Porous, yeah. and the Brez, so, you know, yeah, one game away from the Brez, um, and it was... Coach, yeah. you played with Cotton, That's too? Crazy. Yeah, uh, yep, he, he started at Michigan State, and then um, moved on to, uh, to UDM, Detroit yeah. Mercy, closer to home. But, but Quiz is coaching at Beecher now, I see. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, he's the head coach there now, because uh, I think it was Mike Williams was their highly successful coach, I don't... He went to, uh, did he go to Davis Center? He went somewhere else, the Beecher coach. But yeah, they're just a powerhouse. Beecher's good every single year. Yeah, yeah they are. Yeah. Interesting Quise, stuff. Yeah, Quise has got great, great dude. Um, <laughs> big character. Yeah, so, yeah, so many stories uh, from school. <laughs> Maybe again for another time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Part so two. we were touching on, on, on you know, some, some of the people that you played with at Michigan State. And, and we've covered, you know, you playing AAU. Talk about when you knew. That you were you were going to Michigan State when you committed when you when it finally hit you like hey I'm gonna play D1 basketball. Can, can we step back? I mean, what's it like? I think there's a lot of people out there. Um, well, one of the big things we've talked about a lot on the podcast is like every parent seems like thinks their kid's gonna go to Division One. Absolutely. The, you know what I mean? And like, what what what's the talent level like? What's the recruitment process like? The you know the whole thing leading up to. To committing to something like that because I mean I think that's a very unique thing that kids need to hear more I guess yeah um, you know again at the time well, 19 20 years ago now right? yeah actually I was, yeah I was being recruited over 20 years ago hey, that's crazy time flies time flies we were having fun right anyway um, yeah the process again for me it started uh, started kind of late I'm sure now again you know kids are going uh, and they're specializing more now these days, right? We're going, okay, well, I'm going to try, you know, I want to make it in, in, in basketball, right. whatever, and that's, so that's all I'm going to train. And, you know, in a way that's good, but, uh, you know, I grew up in the era of, hey, you play as many sports as you can, you know, um, and it's kind of, it's good and bad in a way because, you know, when you're out there in the spring on the baseball field, I loved, I loved playing baseball. It was you played great. for Walt, right? Yeah, yeah, Walt Kukowski, great, really, really knowledgeable, great teacher, great baseball coach and a great guy, yeah. He also he was my driver's ed instructor too. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, did you pitch? Because that would be scary coming from the mom. Well, I, you know, you know. Okay, so here's here's the pitching story. Um, I actually have uh, <laughs> my grandfather played in the early '40s for the Cleveland Indians. Oh, really? That's Mike, awesome. Mike Nader. Oh, yeah. you know, Scott probably already knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. he played at three oh six. See. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it was it was in the family, I, you know, and I was a when I was a young kid, right? Like we're talking little league up to middle school. Yeah, I was I was a good pitcher. Um, I uh, okay, and again, uh, by the time I got to high school, I couldn't throw anymore. Um, a lot of it was because of uh, I call it because of football. Um, but, you know, I had a bad. I ended up having surgery and redshirting here in college um, to take care of the shoulder, shoulder issue. Yeah, I could not throw uh, worth a bit. You know, I could not throw. I, you know. I remember, uh, yeah, there was some. I made some bad throws in high school. So, first base. so I stuck at first base. Who was the guest we had on here that was talking about Drew playing first base and he felt safe because he had he, he was so long he was going to catch everything over there. Who was that? I remember I was talking about that. I don't know if it was a guest or it was someone we had I a can't discussion remember. with. It might have been something outside. I don't remember. It might have been something outside, but it might have, might yeah. not have been on the pod. It shows you how old I. You're talking about 19 years ago, mm -hmm. 30 years ago, when, when I was in high school. So, Scott's but really just bear good. with me, please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're about you know as time goes on, we're about. Yeah, you get closer. Yeah, closer. It's more. Yeah, it's more relative. Maybe. That's how life works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's no. Yeah, I had about several short stops. Uh, um, yeah, thrown over there, but uh, I don't know what it was. It was uh, for some reason guys would throw it in the dirt all the time, so I was trying to you know, scoop <laughs> it and catch <laughs> wild hoppers and stuff, and that was obviously not my forte. But yeah, you, you know, you airmail it. I'll go up there. Yeah, you go. Yeah, you go get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you enjoyed it. You enjoyed baseball. I love baseball. Um, again, uh, it was probably the first sport my, my father kind of said, "Hey, well, he bought the you know the little Fisher Price yeah. tee, and, yeah. uh, and you know he had me out there taking cuts That's when awesome. I was when I was when I was young. So uh, yeah, and again, uh, I think it was just you know being so big as a, as a kid. You know, literally, you're, you're pitching from what, like 45 feet or something? Mm -hmm. That's, well, yeah, the ball's on the. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. on your, yeah. 
yeah, it's right there. Fast. So, so that was good. Um, and again, back to you know, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go off on tangents. No, that's that's no, exactly that's, 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 that's what a podcast is about. Here, is. So. Yeah. So, well, back to the original question, which was, hey, recruiting process. When did it start? What did you think about it? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, coming up, uh, I, you know, again, I like playing baseball. I, I enjoyed it. It was a a different. Uh, it's a different speed, of course, because basketball, especially, you know, once you get to AAU and, and especially college, you know, the speed of the game, it's like you, there, you know, there's no thinking. Boom, boom, boom. You're, on, right. you're just reacting. Whereas, you know, or, uh, baseball, um, Walt will teach you, hey, you predetermine what you're doing before every pitch. So, you know, you set up, you take your, your priest, you get, get in position. You know, if there's no if the, there's no hit or anything, you just, you know, kind of reset and think, okay, well, there's a guy in second. So if it's hit to my little brown ball on the left, I'm going to tag first and get the out and, you know, try and throw the guy out there, which I couldn't do in high school. I would have airmailed it. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> But I enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I hit, here you go, Scott. I think I hit 400 my senior year. Nice. Uh, thought, yeah. That's crazy. I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty good. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, and again, but some of the, actually some of the North Korean baseball guys that, that they've produced have been like, like yeah. Brian Buter. And, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Charlie Branch, you know, another guy in, yeah. in the neighborhood. For sure. In there that my, yeah. you know, my folks are, um, yeah, that, well, Charlie, yeah, big time uh, potential Absolutely. talent as a pitcher. You know, and I never, I, you know, I was always away. I never got to see him uh, play, unfortunately. But um, maybe I will get that chance. And uh, I think he's playing uh, junior college now. And has he went to Lincoln Trail or something yeah. like that. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. You'll like have that. a shot to play some of those. So who yeah. are the schools that recruited you then? All right. So uh, you know, starting with AAU, the first, my first offer, my first Division One offer, where you know, your question was, hey, yeah. when did he like, hey, I can, you know, I can play Division One basketball? It was. Uh, I believe it was the it was the Las Vegas the Adidas Big Time AU tournament. I don't know if that, I think that might be defunct. Now, <laughs> like years ago. But that was kind of like, all right, yeah, we're going to you know the Adidas tournament in Vegas. Um, it's a, you know that was kind of the pinnacle of the AU uh, season at the time. Uh, it was um, Fisher, you know, who was at Michigan who won the national yep. championship. He was at San Diego State. Oh yeah. Ah. He watched the game, and uh, I got the word from. I think I think the assistant uh, stole the guy who was helping out with the start. Thing. Hey Drew, Steve Fisher just gave you gave you an offer for San Diego State. I was like, you know that that you know like wow like that like how cool yeah 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 no I it mean it was more like wow how cool is that you know yep. I have a chance I can you know I, I can do something here I have a chance I, I don't know if I could have waited. I think I would have, it, when they said, hey, you got an offer, I think I would have been like, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, like, the, to have patience, though, and be like, okay, here's, I got I got to wait now because there could be more offers. I mean, were, were your, I mean, were your parents, like, real helpful in that process and just like, hey, calm down, like, like keep, you know, and, you know, like, what, what did that look like? How'd that feel? Yeah, um, you know, my father was yeah he was a very he, he's a very very patient guy and i am too i guess i yeah. think it's, it's genetic and sometimes i'm you know patient to a fault but yeah. uh, <laughs> you know it's like yeah you know just just evaluate your options and, and and take your time and keep you know keep getting better yeah um so uh yeah it was a big moment but i thought and i thought oh, san diego state that's, that's really far away yeah it is <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah which is you know it's you know, these days it's you know it's not that's not the way you, you make a decision but mm -hmm. um yeah, uh, yeah. Parents um, and community, and like, and actually, like people, uh, people at the people at the church. Uh, yeah. You know, at the time, we were, we were very helpful. Um, and as uh, the big, you know, more and more people started, or more and more schools started showing interest in recruiting, it was you know, in the Big Ten schools, you know, more and more people kind of uh, came out to uh, be, you know, well, it was sure, helpful, yeah. but I also get, get get sales pitches, get sales pitches too, you know, but. Yeah. Uh, where did yeah. where did it is a recruit your C U or was or was it was it one of his assistants that was really on you the most or who who was it? Yeah, so uh, uh, Spartan recruiting um, at first it was it was Brian Gregory you know he was uh, is a top recruiter at the time in the late nineties early two thousands like right after the you know the national championship in two thousand um, yeah so B G was kind of the point at first and then he went to he took a job at Dayton I believe at the time. You know, Dayton to Georgia Tech. Um, and then Dwayne Stevens, uh, Coach Izzo hired Dwayne Stevens from Marquette, who had, you know, who just coached uh, Dwayne Wade mm -hmm. in the Final Four there in that great Marquette team. Um, with Crane? With Crane, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. With Crane, another former, uh, you know, yeah. Izzo guy. Uh, 
So yeah, DJ, DJ, man, he, DJ is a good recruiter. DJ put his work in. He, um, you know, he came out to Nova City, and I remember uh, he was, you know, talking to Jeff Cook one day, and after school, I walk in, and DJ was like, man, wow, he's he's a big dude. Did you, know? you take like, him to Mr. Quicks? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bar- bargain bundle. Or the, 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 uh, the bag of French fries. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Mr. Quicks is great, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, we did in hindsight. In hindsight, Scott, maybe, you missed, Scott. Maybe, maybe that would have Come missed on, an man. opportunity. <laughs> Um, but yeah, one time DJ, uh, as he, he, he stopped at, uh, and did an in-home visit, you know, and we, um, we cooked up some food and, uh, it was great. So he really, uh, but again, you know, DJ, another, a great Michigan state, you know, right apart some great teams some championship teams, um, you know, but again, like and you talk about, you know, expectations of yeah, yeah, yeah. college, and DJ walked out of Jeff Cook's office, like, man, he's that's 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 a big like this is the competition now right yeah 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 you're like yeah next level you know yeah big big step up not only in terms of uh the speed of the game and um that's really what struck me the first msu game that i went to you know as a recruit to watch you know right down there they put you behind the bench where you're you're very close to the action you can really get a feel for the the speed and intensity and physicality of the game and it's just such a you know a jump. It's such a big step, especially at the time, you know, the nineties, early two thousands, Big Ten basketball, it was like, you know Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, we're, yeah. we're bumping cutters as hard as we can, you know, setting, you know, slightly illegal screens and just <laughs> you know, as much contact as you can it was. And the rules you know, watching the game, they've changed yeah. it, yeah. They've changed it. But uh yeah, that was uh that was that was the biggest step up, the uh, the speed and physicality and again the uh, the size of, of your teammates and, and the competition everybody on the floor competing. I remember uh, my dad called me in the service, and he went down to watch you play one time. Okay. And uh, he said he was standing in the gym, and I don't know if this is true or not because my dad could fib sometimes too. I'm, you know, but he said he was standing in, and Izzo walked in. Was he goes? I turned, and he was standing right next to me. And and I, he goes, I think that's Tom Izzo. And he goes, Should I talk to him? Should I not talk? So he goes, like, Hey, what's up, Tom? <laughs> you know, like it's, you know, it, but I I just like. That's so surreal, right? Like I played basketball in that gym. That's a that's a wonderful place to play, right? Like mm-hmm. you just agree, but it's tiny. And then like I can't even imagine the madness that was going on there with with all that going on, man. That's that's kind of crazy. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's uh, at its peak. I remember, you know, uh, Chuck Ripstra. He was the JV coach at the time. He tells the story this day. He was like, yeah, that was a, you know that was the best time to be the JV coach because the gym would sell out. Everybody trying to get to the varsity. Oh yeah, you yeah. know. And you talk about yeah, Coach Izzo coming. He came to a few games. I think he came to a Shelby game one time. And uh, the story is another classmate of mine was was taking the ticket money, right? Yeah. And uh, she wasn't. I think she was a Michigan fan. And she was like, <laughs> Yeah, that'll be that'll be two dollars, sir. You know, where coaches all walk in. <laughs> that was that was a big story. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Oh my gosh, she made him. She made coaches so okay again. That's <laughs> awesome. I love it. <laughs> That's good. That was good. Surprised she didn't charge him uh, ten bucks. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Because, right. Again. Just because because he's wearing that stuff. Again, <laughs> hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, so other than yourself, right, mm-hmm. which I don't think you'd probably see yourself, who's the best West Michigan Conference player you ever played against? That's one of our revolving questions. Oh, man. So there were some good guys coming through when I was uh, when I was a freshman. Um, some of the Mason County guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Linus. I remember watching Linus yeah, as, a, yeah, as, a, yeah, yeah. as a kid. And actually, when Central Michigan was recruiting me, I went down there when he was on that yep. team. And, uh, you know, later, uh, you know, Chris Kamen, Central Michigan team, mm-hmm. and actually I played with a guy, Stephen Barry, who was at Central. Um, so yeah, I do remember, you know, even before I was in high school, like watching Plinus, you know. Yeah, because he had kind of, to have been right before you, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 He was like late 90s yep. that he graduated, so, so yeah. So he was I another multi-sporter, very good yeah. in all three sports. Oh yeah, I mean, he played uh, he played baseball and basketball at the college, at the Division One college level. Right? Yeah, that's, yeah, it's mm-hmm. nuts. Yeah. Um, so they had, uh, yeah, I remember uh, freshman year at North Muskegon, and Mason County came in. They had this, like, Australian, I don't know. Scott. Adrian Witten, I think, was the name. <laughs> I, t- I told you, Drew. You get, I'm telling you, man, you cannot stump this guy. It's just, he just knows it all. Like, it's he really, really amazing, Scott. Until, I'm until jealous. Brent asked me, hey, do you have your planner done? Do you have all uh, uh, it's all right, Scott. You keep, you keep, it's amazing, man. Like, so yeah. Adrian Scott is that that is that what he said? Adrian Witten. 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 And there okay. was another big. Okay, Scott, I'm just going to defer to you. Oh you know, man, you're going to stump me on this. Oh, one. we got. I you. remember Daring. There was Daring. Okay. He was a good yeah. point guard. Yep, yep. Witten. There was another kid. Uh-huh. Hold on. 
Let me search. Yeah, oh, I played. That's, that's, that is. It's not. Yeah. That's I, cheating if I just can't pull it off. Yeah, <laughs> I played against Deering when he was a freshman. They moved him up as a freshman, and like when you mm-hmm. talk about the jump, like. I remember everybody talking about him when he was an eighth grader, and he was—he's not much bigger than me. I mean, he's—he's like, he's got to be like five nine, five ten, and um, he was really good as a freshman. But like, it was so much faster. Like yeah, you, yeah. you know, like, and he was—he was a good freshman basketball player, but he got better and better year after year. You know, it's mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, that, that's really the key as you move up. You got to adjust your game. I mean, even if you're going from uh, you know one country, one league to another, or you know different coaching stuff, you just got to adjust. And what I would do is I would kind of take. Uh, you know, the coaching, you got all kinds of different coaching, right? You know? Yeah. There are times where the head coach will say, hey, you know, you know, this is what we're trying to do on this play, and then you'll go up to the side, and the assistant coach will say, hey, big dream, like, big dream, this is what you got to, you know. Yeah. Doing the total opposite thing. So you got to, you got to, you got to <laughs> choose. Um, but just, you just, you just got to, you get used to it, and you kind of take uh, the good stuff that works for you, and then the rest, you just kind of, you know, yeah. right, coach, yeah, and then move on. For um, sure. David Gregoire? Yeah, yeah, yeah Greg Wire. Uh, yeah. Greg Wire, is that what he said? Yep, yep. Right. Yeah, I remember, so He's we, gonna uh, bother me if I didn't. <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Our guys. he'll never forget that I'll either. <laughs> he'll remember that for the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> it's locked, it's locked in the vault. That's very true. So, so you graduated from Northern Muskegon in what year? 2003. It was 2003. 2003. So 2004, well 2003, the fall, was probably was your first year at uh, MSU. Yep. And you redshirted red shirt your freshman year. Um, and had the surgery, the shoulder, the shoulder surgery. But you know, I'm sorry to change the subject, guys. But I, I'd be remiss if I didn't. Um, my, my later years, if I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, Shelby had really good teams. Oh yeah, Mark yeah, Hunter, yeah. Aaron yeah. Gowell, uh, Derek Griffin at Whitehall. Yeah, you know, some. So you know, there was some good. Like Derek Griffin, I remember. No um, kidding. He went. Uh, he ended up playing uh, in the early three on three professional league. He went over. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Um, and he was working with the uh, the Denver Nuggets organization for a while out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, some guys that have gone on and done some, done some good things and some, uh, some some very cool things. So, uh, but yeah, again, a lot of good players. It's twenty yeah. years ago. Scott, thank you for the. Uh, the assist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I love it. it. It's got to be hard to remember everybody that you played with. Over the years. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially once you get into the, you know, the pro, overseas yeah. circuit. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a lot, but at the same time, you know, you'll be. You talk with your friends and or, or guys like like sitting down with me and talking about different guys you played against or uh, different situations. It all you know jogs the memory and uh, comes back quickly. So Drew, what's what's the favorite gym, arena, location you have ever played? Like, what's your favorite place? Like, if you could play there all the time, that's where I want to play. That's a good question. That's a yeah, that's Thank a really you. good question. Um, I like the old style uh, <laughs> gyms. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, I think we all did. Yeah, I played, uh, again, I didn't play an official a game there, but uh, I did, I had an agent from Indianapolis, and I would go down there and work out in the summer, so we played, uh, played pick up with the Butler guys at Hinkle. Oh, oh, man, yeah. Really cool. yeah. Legendary yeah. place. Yeah, you know, from Hoosiers and Wolverine, how cool is that? Yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. awesome. Um, okay. Yeah, overseas, I would have to say, that is, again, tough question. Man. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed playing in Greece. I played uh, Ice Thessaloniki. Um, they have this old kind of, I don't know, circular style court, almost like a, almost like a Mackey at Purdue. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Different sizes. The thing that made that place special was uh, the 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 fans, the fans of the Greek basketball fans, or whether you can look up videos on, on YouTube. I still saw Nike fans. You know, they bring in the road flares and, and the drums, and for the rivalry games, you know, you got guys take a shirt off, you know. Go have a few with your friend before the game. Put on, they put on the lock of us, you know. <laughs> and they had the little riot police, shields, riot police. I love it. Miles. Yeah, they, they separate um, the fans of, of your team and the you know the other team and, and the crosstown rivalry. Yeah, they call it the derby game. Um, yeah. They yeah, get serious. So, that's nuts. We actually had a game canceled in Greece, so we were in the second court. So before the game, again, this was that crosstown game, right? Yeah. This is this is the pinnacle of uh, of the season if you're a a, a serious fan of these these teams in Greece, right? You know, in uh, in Athens, it's uh, Panathinaikos, Olympiakos, and Thessaloniki, which is like Greece's second city. Beautiful, I loved it there. Beautiful place. It's Aris and uh, and Pauk, uh, you know, the crosstown rivals. And uh, before the game, um, 
you know, they're, they're you know doing things like lighting coins, throwing stuff on. I think someone threw a full vodka bottle onto the court <laughs> and warm ups. And then in this particular game, whenever there's a jump ball, <laughs> everyone takes the uh, the old receipt paper, right? Like the little roll of receipt paper. On the, you know, you type in the thing. Yeah. Well, Wait a minute. I think you were just described the call center, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what, that was, what's that was the not route? one of my favorite places to play. I was going to say, yeah. what's the rowdiest or most intimidating college venue that you've been in? Um, Duke. You know, because uh, at Cameron, they've got people, that, again, you talk about old style arenas. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, uh, you, you you have people right on top of you. Like, they have to move the students back to inbound the ball, yeah. you know, sideline out of bounds, you know, things like that. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty wild. Um, and uh, as far as yeah, that that was a good one. Probably probably Duke's the most um, intimidating as far as like a college venue. I mean, we played we played uh, we played Fort Field. We did that game, you know, when I was uh, I was yeah. a freshman against Kentucky. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I was at the game. Yeah, yeah and those those playing in those big arenas. I'm not. I didn't really like it. Like uh, we did that also in at, at Lucas Oil for the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. 2008, mm -hmm. my senior year, and what they do for um, also for the Final Four St. Louis at the. Uh, I don't know, the, you know, the dome, it keeps changing names. But, you know, it was the TFA <laughs> dome at the time, yeah, 20 yeah. years ago. Anyway, yeah. yes, that's sponsorships change. But um, what they do for the Final Four, for example, is um, you'll have three sides of the stands, right? Of just straight up football arena stands all the way up. And then they'll bring a, a giant grandstand in on one of the sidelines, the front sidelines, you can put, you know, I don't know, those football arenas will put 80 to 100,000 yeah. in, right? Mm -hmm. And it, with the basketball set up like that, it's... Uh, it's weird. Uh, How yeah. weird is it playing on a court like that? Where, because you're... And you get that in any arena, but especially in, like in a football stadium where there's the, the backdrop. You have no backdrop, the frame of reference. 100%. Yeah, there's no there's a weird shooting background. Like, yeah. uh, again, for the setup at, uh, at Sweet 16, it was there's just like a giant black curtain behind... The, and there's a small grandstand, but... You know, it's at some points you you know you're facing up and you've got the the hoop set up and then behind it is just this void, you know, mm -hmm. of, of yeah. nothing. It's just curtain. So yeah, it's definitely a, it's an adjustment. But again, you get into the game and you're you know, big time game. You're just going so hard you don't you don't think about it. Um, a little different than the old barn at North Muskegon, huh? A little different, a little different. But yeah, you know, growing up there, playing there all the time, you get used to that. Yeah. You know, background. Maybe that's why I like the old style. Yeah. You know, gyms like. Uh, yeah, North That's Michigan. a super cool gym. Oh my gosh, I love it. When we moved back, like nothing against all the new gyms, and Montague's working on a new gym right now. I know. So like, but Whitehall was one that I remembered the old school because Whitehall was very much like North Whitehall, yeah. North Muskegon. Um, and I like Shelby's too. Shelby's old, not their not their new one. I don't remember when they built the big huge one now where you're 19 feet off the. Yeah, that's crazy. It goes by that fast. But, yeah, you know, you go around and you see all these new gyms, and it's just kind of it, – it's cool that they're, you know, they're doing that, but it's sad, too, in a sense. Like, going and watching the kids at North Muskegon this year, like, it's just so loud in there still. And it's awesome. Like, it feels like basketball. I don't even know how else to, to, to describe it. But. On top of that, the North Muskegon fans are great. Wow, like The man. student section. They're awesome. They're, 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 they're among the best that I've seen. They, they are. They're they awesome. Agree. They get it. It's always fun going there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree with you, though. We went and watched uh, the Elite Eight at Ford Field um, mm -hmm. and uh, watched Steph, uh, went Steph Curry, the first time I ever saw him play. And it was – I thought I had good seats. And, like, you're just, like, nine miles away from everything. And, I, like, it's just a weird – because it's not made for basketball. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. So. Yeah, those will take it at the far corners – of like where you know there's kind of a haze right <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, yeah it's crazy people, like, when you look at another court looking up they're like wow like, like people are watching they just yeah hey well, i was in the game i went to the final four you know and that's yeah cool. that's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah yeah that's what i was like for the the, the basketball in kentucky michigan state now we were down the lower bowl but it was still that, felt like miles that's away. Uh, we were too in the elite eight like i really thought we had legit good tickets and we got there and you're just like they don't go up they're like mm -hmm. they go out you know and so you're still like you're still a long ways away, you know. Yeah, you're watching the jumbotron. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, hey, you, you won the game. You're in the game, so mm -hmm. yeah, there's value. That's wild. Yeah, that's wild. Uh, we we started to talk about Michigan State a little bit in, in your freshman year, and just how how was it? How big of a change was it? And, and what were some of your favorite things about about playing at Michigan State? 
Um, yeah, some of my favorite things are, yeah, some of the big the big wins we had, some of the stuff we over, you know, because you're always going to, college basketball, you're always going to have adversity, and that's kind of a, a hallmark of, you know, Coach Izzo's program and his system. He's like, hey, you know, you guys are going to fight. We're going to have them. We're going to work through this adversity, and it's you guys together. And oftentimes, um, at the time, you know, uh, Coach would – it was almost like, hey, you guys ever read the book uh, Season on the Brink about Bobby Knight? No, yeah, Bobby Knight, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so he would kind of, it was kind of a similar approach. Coach Izzo is not, um, n- not the same. Um, but I think one of the things that, that he took was kind of like, it builds better brotherhood and camaraderie amongst the players if there are times where you play a little good cop, bad cop, you know, with the coaching staff, where like, hey, you know. Coach is creating all this adversity, and it's just it's just hard. Healthy coaching. conflict. Healthy conflict. Yeah, you talk about it here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 and you talk about it, it does. It builds uh, uh, mental toughness. It builds um, the ability to fight through some things in adversity. And it also builds the group, you know, of your team, of your guys that you're coaching. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, yeah, one thing is always says, and, I, and you can still see it to this day, is I want a, a player-coach team, not a coach-coach team. Yep. And I think that kind of speaks to that a little bit. Yeah, 100%, Scott. You actually, I mean... Yeah, you guys are the pros. You just put it more, much more succinctly. Than that. <laughs> yeah, but you've lived it. I mean, yeah. yeah. And you're so yeah. It says the guy that's naming off the the bazillion arenas <laughs> yeah. all over the world that I haven't even. I just want to go to, and he's yeah. played basketball in them. But you're, Come you're on, so dude. you're so even keel, so chill. Yeah, he I don't is. even know if the kids say that anymore. It's his vibe. But how did that? How did your personality <laughs> mesh with? <laughs> I know, the, I know the lingo. Right. I got teenagers. They had to keep up. How, how did your personality mesh or clash with Izzo's? And and is Izzo like what everyone sees, or is he a lot different? Because players come back all the time, which tells me that they love him. And at the end of the day, even though he's really tough. Yeah, he's he's just it's just hard coaching. And like you're saying, you know, um, no guys love him. And I tell you what, uh, with my career, I was I was traveling all over, and I'm I'm really not I'm honestly not good at uh, like staying in touch. With, with people that have, even if even if I've gone through, you know, even if we've overcome a lot and accomplished a lot together, I'm not, you know. Anyway, I was, uh, the last time, I think the last time I went to Michigan State was, it was 2015 for an Oregon football game. And I was, it was great. You know, it was a big reunion. We had a bunch of former players. Queese was there. Uh, you know, a bunch of guys. Neitzel was there. Anyway, um, I went back this year for uh, a Toledo game. Um, and they treated me like I had left last week. You know, yeah. it was it was unbelievable, and you know, so lots of you know, he, he you talk about the family, um, that approach that that Coach Izzo has in his program, and it's you know, has can he's always had that, you know, ever since you know this his first his years, even even guys that when he was an assistant under Judd, you know, yeah. everyone is welcome back. If you went through this, if you went through the battles with us, you know. You've earned it, and you are welcome. And um, that is, one, like, they treated me unbelievably well, and you know, it was it was amazing to go back. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of a lot of you know organizations will say, hey, you know, we're, we're like a family, right? But that you know, with the way that the way they operate there at, at, in East Lansing is, is it's true. It's pretty it's pretty special. Now, leadership's a big thing too, and that's one thing that Brent. And we stress here at Catch Mark. And um, how much of it is that? Do you see that in Michigan State in terms of, you know, that true leadership? And there aren't always going to be the easy times, but having that structure, you know, because you look at, I, I keep thinking about this year's team and Michigan State team, and they got off to a great start, and mm-hmm. then they hit hit a struggle recently, and people are ready to kind of just cash it in, cash it in, and say, yeah. oh, they don't have it. But how much of it is leadership? How much of it is, you know, just a bunch of different factors? Like, if you look at this year's team, how much of it has to do with that leadership, do you think? Yeah. Um, you know, Coach, his his program, yeah, he likes, uh, uh, in the past he's had great success with kind of big personality, um, tough leaders from, from, from the guard position, from the point guard. You know, starting yeah. probably with... Uh, you know, with, with Izzo's teams, with, with Mateen Cleaves, yeah. you know. Um, and so that's kind of the, the archetype of guys, you know, that he's looking for. And, um, you know, now you, you don't have, you know, like especially the upperclassmen like that, you don't have an upperclassman that's been through the program. Um, you know, you got Walker, great player. Yeah. Know, very talented player. He's won them, won them some big games uh, coming down the stretch here. But uh, 
or you know, actually, uh, what was it the Illinois game in the second half? They actually Illinois. It was you know, road games in the Big Ten are so tough, right? Yeah. Um, you know, Walker kind of went off in the second half. I'm pretty much, you know, you put them right there. They didn't end up finishing the game and winning the game, but uh, you know, um, and then they've got uh, you know, um, yeah, it's just. Uh, I think that piece this year is um, uh, maybe something you could point to in mm-hmm. terms of the, the strong point guard. And our, you know, when I was going through my last couple of years, it was uh, you know Travis Walton, you know, a guy who was right. not a big, um, not a big scorer, not a big guy production-wise in terms of numbers. But you talk about you know vocal leadership. Yeah, he was you know he was you know lighting a fire under guys. He was pushing you. You know, hey. We're doing better. this. We're doing this. Yeah, we're getting in. We're getting in the gym. We're doing this. We're uh, you know we're gonna go watch some film um, and doing all the little things to to maximize your potential. And that's really what all this you know all the focus is and all the hard coaching is because you know you got to find something at that level to to differentiate yourself to get an edge. Mm-hmm. You know um, because like I say uh, there you know lots of there yeah. lots of I mean they're not lots but you know talented. Six ten, seven foot, like, strong wings, athletic guards, um, guys like you know, guys like Shannon Brown, Malager, athletic wings and stuff like that. You know, it's not just you know our program that has those. You know, right? You got to find something to uh, yeah differentiate yourself. I, I got to put well. you on the spot mm-hmm. yep. on this one. Um, in your mind, how much longer do you think Izzo goes, and and who would be in your mind also who mm-hmm. would be a great successor to him? Ooh, that's a yeah, that's a tough one. Good question. Um, so, coach, what he's like in what twenty sixth year as head coach, something like that. Six twenty seven, something like that. Like, yeah, like that. Ninety six, just passed, yeah. just passed Bob Knight. Yep. He's the all time winning us in the Big Ten. I mean, how? That's amazing. That's a that's a huge hill. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that's no crazy. Um, but you talk about you know some of the other uh, blue blood coaches. You got Shashevsky calling it this year. Yeah. Um, Roy Williams has retired. Um, you know, a lot of the, like the landscape of college basketball has changed in terms of, you know, with the, the new, the transfer yeah. rules, right? Where um, it's like, uh, you know, hey, if a guy's, hey, I'm not happy with my playing time, um, you know, everyone, because, you know, you go to Division One, everyone's not only trying to do that, everyone's trying to get to the league. Everyone's trying to get right. to, you know, hey, right, right. Or, or whatever um, pro level, the highest pro level you can get to, right? So, hey, I'm not getting my minutes. I need to go. I'm gone. And now... You know, you can go, no penalty. Yeah. It's like, it's almost like you have to recruit your whole team every year. Yeah. So that is, uh, that's a that's a big challenge and adjustment. And again, it's just one of those things you got to, you know, the game constantly evolves and constantly changes, just like just like everything in life, right? But, um, it's, <laughs> yeah, man, it, it really is. You're putting me on the spot here. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I think he's got, he's got a few more things he wants to do. So he's got... I think he um, wants another yeah, natty, doesn't he? He wants he wants another title. He does. He's, I mean, he doesn't uh, need it, about. but like I, I can just I you can just kind of see. I mean, I he, that, yeah, you know, tons of Final Fours. He's he's been all around it. He's got one, but like I think he'd like another one. Oh know? yeah, you talk about uh, right the yeah. ultimate goals. Yeah, yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. And um, you know, with the way college basketball is this day, you never know. I mean, one yeah. year to the next, you had to, you know, yeah. Yeah, you never know. There's um, been there, there's been so many what ifs. You can say this about a lot of programs, but mm-hmm. like, what if um, Kalen Lucas doesn't tear his Achilles? That team might have been primed. What if yep. you know when Cassius was there with with Tillman, they were playing really well, and then COVID hit, and they there's no I mean there's no guarantees for any of that stuff. But and like I said, you can say that about a lot of teams. But there's been some I don't want to call them near misses or whatever, but teams that were right there that could have yeah. been. Another yeah. national title team. The, the the difference is just it's so crazy. But oh yeah, Drew, you 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 kind of you're a really humble guy. Like you you know and and I'm just picturing like I'm just picturing you as a college freshman walking into like oh. I, I visited Michigan State. My my grandpa graduated from state. We've been Sparty since I was a kid, right? Like, and I remember just going on campus to to see it. I was like, no way, this is too much. There is like. What do you mean? It's forty minutes to get from one side of campus to the other, right? Like, are, it yeah. doesn't take me forty minutes to walk from my house, from my house in Montague to to Whitehall, right? Like, so like, what was that feeling like walking in there and like the first time you're you're like in the Breslin and you're in a Sparty practice uniform and you're like, I mean, 
it just I, I'm it just kind of crazy. Like yeah, well, the good thing about coaching is hard coaching is he'll he'll snap you out of that. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> good. Because I remember yeah. my very first practice, <laughs> <laughs> the first five on zero transition drill that we ran. Um, you know, I got the ball out of the rim and was supposed to outlet it, but. Um, you know, coming to high school AAU, you know, it was like, all right, well, all right, let's take our time, let's let's get a good set, and when walk it up. Oh no! Oh yeah. <laughs> so I, I uh, the way I outlet, he immediately blows his whistle, and Friday, he's like, "Name He's like, "That is not how we take the ball." Out, you know? <laughs> Uh, we didn't even have to bleep it out here. Yeah, you know, maybe yeah, took care of that for Juice yeah. all bleep. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, right? Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> so, but, you know, it was the first practice. He grabs it, demonstrates it, sprints out, and it's like, you know, just going nuts and outlets the ball. It's like, all right, all right, you know. So uh, that snapped me out of it right away. But, yeah, right, your first practice, you're like, oh, wow, this is, you know, you almost think like you made it, but you haven't because you're just, you know, you're just starting. You know, every time you start a new level like that, you can't really – do you, do you ever like so I, I know in yeah. the business world right like we we've talked we talk about this often it's almost an imposter syndrome like I remember the first I got out of the service I got hired by Northrop Grumman I, I got a really good job and I remember talking to my wife Kara and I'm like when are they gonna find out I don't really know what I'm doing yeah you know <laughs> what I mean like like when's the other shoe gonna drop right like it's it's crazy I mean is there any of that kind of feeling like like holy crap like the uh, the fake it till you make it yeah kind of yeah thing. you know yeah, like make it kind of thing I, I mean that's got to happen in athletics too I mean you get some really super confident guys that probably are yeah. the most insecure but like well, just just thinking can man can I can am I really ready for that or is this really like you know you, what I mean you know you talk about the super confident guys and you know okay this is it's a family podcast right yeah like, <laughs> I don't know so maybe this is anyway I'm just gonna say it so in yeah, my experience in, in college and in in the pros with basketball. The, the best of the guys who kind of outperform or the guys you look at and say, all right, well, we got this dude. And then he goes out there and like, like, wow, this guy can really, this guy can really play. The guys who have like this irrational self-confidence on the court. Yeah. You know, um, who, who you step on the court and you think, yeah, I'm the man. Like, I'm the best one out here. No one can right. stop me. Yep. That's the approach you have to have in order to kind of maximize yeah. your Yeah. Corey Lucius. <laughs> well, well, hey, not just, I mean, so I know. many guys. You, guys can, you can throws, name a lot of them. Um, and it's hard if you have kind of that as your <laughs> as your approach, and if that's in your psyche, that's hard to turn off when you get off yeah. the basketball court, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I was, uh, I was not, I don't know. I guess I'm, not, I was not wired that way. You know, yeah, you see, you seem like a real life. humble guy, like low no, key, and like you know. There's a lot of alphas though at that level, but yeah. but there's there's a room for the humble people like yourself. And you had a great well, career. You were the block shots leader. For what well, you said, I think four or five years, you know, at Michigan State. Yeah, I ended up I developed the confidence, I and mean, it got to the point, and I, I found, you know, later on in my college career, I found I played the best, and you know, no thing, I was just out there. You talk about, you know, you know, hey, I don't care if I, you know, break this guy's nose or, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, family podcast. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right now. When does this air? <laughs> yeah, no, you, you can edit it, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> We're not gonna, but like. <laughs> yeah, it's all on the record. That's yeah, it. It's all on the record. record. Yeah, it's all good. No, it's it's great. It's crazy. Like, um, just we're like I just can't imagine walking out of a gym in North Muskegon one season and walking into the Breslin the next. It's just a it's just a crazy, crazy kind of thing. So, so then yesterday was Senior Day for mm-hmm. Michigan State. Obviously, you went through that. They have the tradition uh, of kissing the Spartan helmet on the floor. I mean, what was that? What are the emotions that wash over you? Because it's and maybe I don't know if it hits you all at once or if it hits you later on, but you. Just all the journey that you're on to go from North Muskegon to Michigan State and just everything you've been through and all the adversity that you speak of. Well, yeah, I mean, you talk about um, ad- adversity. Well, I'll tell you what. What struck me yesterday was, you know, how about Marcus Bingham's performance in the first half? You know, how he came out um, yeah. mm-hmm. just, just playing free, you know, hitting, hitting threes, blocking shots, um, affecting the game on both ends of the court. They went out of that 14-0 run, you know. And of course, Maryland, you know, came out second half and, and almost almost took the game. But uh, oh man, that first half that the Spartans came out on senior night again—it's your last chance to go out and perform in the Brez. Um And it's uh, a great tradition. The way Coach approaches it is great. It's like it's it's all about the, and it's, again, it's all about the work you guys put in for the program. It's all about the battles you guys have gone through. You know. This this is this is your night, and then again after all the hard all the coaching, all the adversity you go through in college, you know when 
when you complete your senior year, and again, I, I had a redshirt year, so I did you know, victory lap fifth year, yeah. or four year, five year, whatever yeah. it is. Um, you know, once you once you get through that and you graduate, it's almost like, all right, yeah. You know, you, you, again, you're always welcome back and you're treated like, you know, again, someone who has contributed to a, a big time program like that. I don't know how many players have gone through, you know, and coaches that was 10 years, probably. I don't know, 26 Jeez. years. Yeah, a lot, it's, a lot of guys. It's crazy. Yeah, and um, he cries like a baby too on senior day, doesn't he? It's a culmination of uh, again all the work and all the adversity that, and all the things you overcome. Again, as as a group, as a group of uh, as a group of brothers, you know, as a family, um, and uh, yeah, great great tradition. It is. It's uh, you know, kissing center court there. Um, is it's like, you know, again, that's your moment. That's your moment of recognition for all the stuff you put in over the past how many years, and even before Michigan State, you know, you know, getting to that point. Um, so it's great. He always does, they always do a great job with that. And again, it was, the first half yesterday was a thing of beauty to watch with those guys, uh, you know, on seniors, Bingham Hauser and Gabe Brown, you know. And again, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great to watch those guys um, as they progress um, after this year, wherever they, end up pooping at. I mean, I think the ceiling for those guys, um, you know, Bingham, for example, you know, you talk about a, a niche, yeah. you know, potentially NBA guy, defensive specialist yeah. guy can protect. Uh, I still don't goal. think we've seen the best of what he can oh, do. Oh, no, I don't think so either. No, that's the thing. I mean, to me, it was the same with me coming out of uh, coming out of school. You know, you kind of go and um, at different, different types of trainers and you kind of uh, expand things, look at different things. You got, you just got to continue to develop, especially these first couple of years out of school. You know, as a as a young pro, you've got to, you know, you got to expand your offensive skill set and adjust to the pro game. Like, um, you know, again, here's another tangent: the difference in uh, college rules versus the portals. First way, it's just a twenty four second shot clock. Yeah, that mm -hmm. that changes things. Let me ask you a question. What do you think about? We've had some discussions about shot clock in high school. What do you think? Oh about yeah, absolutely. I was going to bring this up with you guys. I was yeah. going to ask you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're definitely okay. I was uh, against it when Brian yeah. Beebe brought it up earlier, mm -hmm. and I've watched, uh, you know, I've watched a lot of high school basketball, and one of the things we've noticed, like, and, and I thought I was losing my mind as my kids got into into you know playing varsity athletics, right? Like, I'm like, I don't ever remember in high school scoring under like 65 or 70 points a game and i mean we put up 90 a couple times like mm -hmm. the the but the games are you know the other night i, well, I can't remember what game it was it might have been fruitport it was like 16 18 at half no kidding yeah, right like I, I watched guys mm -hmm. i watched guys in high school drop 16 18 easily in a quarter mm -hmm. right like mm -hmm. um so i the more i've watched the more i think the way you fix that teams have just gotten really patient and the ball just moves, and they're they're really skilled, but the shots don't go up because of that. And I, I think I've completely changed my view on that. I think shot clock's necessary in high school now. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I I hundred percent agree with that. And I've heard both sides of the uh, of the coin here because I was actually talking to Chuck, Jeff, and uh, Cody after one of these games, and I brought this up. I said there should be a shot, there should be a thirty second shot clock, you know, especially at eight minute quarters. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're talking if it's well the other day. Um, you know, North Virginia won that bad day that, that buzzer beater against uh, yeah. Potter's house. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Chuck drew up a great play, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. The way you defend that, if you haven't um, if you haven't seen, I'm not going to, you know, he might run again in the district. So I'm not gonna, <laughs> well, his, yeah, son, his, son, his son Connor, who plays for Montague, was stumbling. Yeah, that's just the elevator play. Yeah, he, right he did. He closed the door. So. Yeah. Right, he so. was wide open, though. Like, I don't know how he got such a good look knowing. And you knew McManus was going to shoot it. Yeah, like, hey. For sure. But the thing is, they were up. Well, they were up I think they were down one point or two points, yeah. right? So you can't give up a layup. Right. So the, yeah, the yeah. Way, it is a little different. All right. So I'm not going to totally give away how you guard it. But <laughs> you guys, it's on tape. You guys are it out Yeah. Now. There mean, videos <laughs> everywhere now, Jim. Anyway, You're not. So you, the way you guard that is the, you know. The inside big, you know, shows and contests the shot. But if you do that now, if you're not on the same team, same page with your teammate, your guy slips and gets a layup. Mm -hmm. So right. I think that's what the big, the Potter South big was concerned about. And so he, he stayed with his man and did not show him, you know. Yeah. Game yeah. yeah. I see you guys put that on your website, right? That we was did. It. See, that's the thing oh, that's yeah. a little yeah. different, awesome too, moment. even from when you played. Mm -hmm. What's different now is technology and, I mean, just video <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, and it, social media. It's just so different. It changes the game and what we do. Yeah, I mean, Scott's hit the wrestling finals, and he's stuff's going up all day Saturday. Like, okay. I mean, things are just – like, that cycle is just – it's just quick now. You know, like, 
and, you know, I mean, even back, like, I wasn't too far before you, but, like, you know, like, you're lucky if you got tape on somebody, oh, right? Yeah. Like, like when you got into the, I remember we played Mus- Muskegon Catholic in, in the first round of districts my senior year, and you, you, you got to send somebody to a Catholic game to watch them, right? To get, and then you just got it written, hey, this guy likes to do this, and this guy likes to... You know, nowadays with huddle and with with parents filming, I mean, you can get just about anything you want. Yeah. You know, like so. When, when I first got into this, into sports writing, it was an era when you would go cover a game and the story would maybe publish in the paper or whatever the next morning. You'd have a deadline, you know, be in the paper. If you weren't putting it online, you weren't putting things on social media. Now, it's that incremental reporting where you're at an event and you're tweeting throughout the whole thing. You different social media accounts. And people, by the time that that maybe quote hits the paper or or the story goes on online the next morning or whatever, it's almost old news at that point. It's just different. Yeah, everyone's got an HD camera. Yeah, in their pocket, the, right? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. So uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, it changes a lot. There's mm-hmm. there's film out there. I mean, um, but that's the way. I mean, uh, change the subjects again. That's really what made me um, a much like a. a a much much better player at Michigan State, especially defensively. You know, was going in there because the film setup at the time was it was state of the art at the time, and it is you know again to this day, it's much more accessible and easier for players to go in and watch film. But it was set up to where you go in and talk to one of the the video guy or one of the managers and say, hey, um, you know, we're playing, uh, let's say for example, we're playing Indiana this week, and I want to watch DJ Wade all his baskets of the last three games, and they would have it all sorted. And you know, now you know it's. There are companies that outsource this, but at the time it was these managers back there yeah. logging yeah, doing it all. Yeah. It was a grind. I mean, you talk about okay, so so Belichick and Brady and the, the Belichick coaching tree, whatever year, mm-hmm. like oh, what is it? The charting the games or charting the plays, and it's like this tedious mm-hmm. job. Well, you know, there's a basketball version of that too, and uh, Coach Izzo would have his managers back there doing it. And also, I think that's part of the reason why you have you know um, guys from that coaching tree starting as managers, like going on becoming, you know, coaches, coaches in college. And, and Yeah, it really sets you up well. But anyway, uh, yeah, you go in there and watch and, 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 and run it back and kind of get little tendencies. Um, okay, so say this guy in the on somebody says, oh, well, he's, you know, left shoulder, he wants to go left shoulder hook. Well, what's his counter? Because you get to the point where, you know, you're kind of baiting his, you're baiting the counter, but you know he's going back to it. So, hey, all right, well, I'm going to take away his left shoulder. I'm just going to, I'm going to, like, play a little bit more to the outside and maybe – fake and make it think that he can go middle and then go back and you know, you know block a shot when he goes for it. Like that kind of stuff. That really really helped me um not also and also getting used to the to the speed of the game because again that was the biggest that was the biggest adjustment for me because like, I was you know I was skinny eighteen. So yeah, it was still uh, the physicality was big but also just you know the speed that you had to to play it. Um so much different. And going in and watch a film was a big, big thing for me. So yeah, so maybe again family pocket, maybe for the kids, you know. Watch a lot of film on yourself and uh, yep. maybe kind of get a prototype of, hey, this is the type of player I want to be. Watch his film. And then, yeah, if you can scout your opponents and uh, yeah. take something away from that, that's it's big and it's very accessible these days. 100%. Mm-hmm. So, Drew, we're, we're, um, I think last question. Uh, we're trying to try to keep it. But not that we want to cut you off because this is – like I could talk to you all day, just, just for uh, the yeah. record. Let's go, um, let's go have some lunch. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> let's uh, – well, Tell us a little bit about your current life. Do you got kids? Like, what do you what are you up to now? Like, do you ever plan on coaching? Like that kind of stuff. Coaching, uh, you know, I guess that would be the natural progression, right? But I never, you know, as a player, it was never really a, um, a stated, uh, never really goal. Like, I don't know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna coach. But it's just like one of those things where you know, after being around the game for so long, five years at state, thirteen years as an overseas pro, you just know. You know, I yeah, your experience level is like yeah. yeah, and I'm not talking like high level. You know, college coaches and pro coaches are on on another level in terms of their strategy and X's and O's and what they're looking at and you know what. Hey, you know, Drew, what are you going to draw up for you know out of a timeout for a game winner? Well, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, depends. Depends on the situation. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe that would be a natural step. Or else, you know, I was thinking, hey, I'll find something else that I'm good at. You know, yeah, I'm done playing. And go from there, but I will tell you guys. There's, I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, the last couple of years have been you know different, but uh, there's maybe one more thing or one more place I'd like to go play for. You know, oh, nice. A short time, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Nice, um, nice. So yeah, I I was in Japan um, 
you know, I stayed over there last couple years. I, you know, I, I loved it. Yeah. Love living over there. All the stuff, all the good stuff you hear about Japan is true. You know, true, like you must be, look food. like a giant in Japan. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, the Japanese, like if you're out, like say in, in Tokyo, you know, they're used to seeing foreigners and stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And, and the Japanese, part of their, they're just super respectful. They're not yep. gonna, like, like, yeah. oh, wow. Sometimes the kids would be like, like, hey, mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you seeing this? Yeah. yeah. No, but no. <laughs> No, no, no. But it was great. Very respectful. You can go uh, operate and uh, do what you need to do. Um, you know, as a kid growing up, when you're a six, eight kid, right? You know, yeah. I guess it's, it can open a lot of doors. Yeah. I'm saying, uh, you know, realize that more now. But at the time, it's almost like, hey, I want to get out and see what's outside, what's Michigan. But hey, but it's actually a great place. Uh, you know, you'd be walking down the street, um, and it, any any city, from across the street, somewhere you go, like, hey. You know, you're really, you're really tall. How tall are you? <laughs> so he is, you know, a 17, 18 year old kid. You gotta be tired of that. But, uh, but again, you know, um, you get used to it. And uh, again, it can open, it can open some doors. It can open some doors. Yeah, absolutely. Here. Yeah. So you thinking about playing in Japan again? Is that, is that? Um, you know, the last league I was there, they treated me really well. It was a, it was a three on three league down in Kagoshima, in Kyushu, southern Japan. Um, and. Uh, again, with all the with all the stuff going on, and I got back. Uh, my sister got married. Oh, okay. I came back for that, um, and you know, with yeah, again, the last couple of years have just been been different. And this team, they, they, you know, I got to I, you know, they treated me really, really well, and we we're you know thinking about going back. But when I got back here, and um, the some of the stuff I got into when I got back, which was uh, I got a place I'm fixing up. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, into some other properties and stuff too. So I want to develop that as a, you know, as kind of a, as a side income. And you yeah, know, I was telling Scott earlier. Who knows? I mean, maybe if I keep expanding, it might just become uh, what I end up what I end up doing. But now we're talking about, you know, hey, this is something I know basketball. You know, I don't know, you know, yeah. this, this other stuff like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I tell you, it is fun to watch. It's it's great to watch uh, watch pros work. Like Scott, you're saying your you know your family's into you know construction. And, yep. And contracting and that kind of thing. Um, so, in video, I, mean, I, I try to do a lot of the house stuff um, myself, and it's it's good. You know, you can watch videos and hey, this is how you do this. But it takes me a hundred times longer you know, <laughs> yeah. to do something you know, when you're hiring a pro. And pro just comes, oh yeah, you do this and this and this. It and makes you boom, sick boom. sometimes. Like, like well, it's, what just, the it's heck? amazing to watch. Yeah, yeah mechanically inclined when it comes to that yeah. stuff. YouTube does help. It does help a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But still, you're like, well, you know, if I knock this down, like. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's gonna happen to my house? Yeah. <laughs> and do I have time? I mean, that's my always my biggest fear is like, what if I do screw this up? What what? When am I gonna fix the screw up? Because I don't have time to barely time to do it now. Like, how am I gonna fix it if yeah, I mess the, it up? The pros know? they charge extra for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. For sure. All right. Well, Drew, I appreciate you being on the podcast. Zach, you want to take us out? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Drew, so much. We appreciate it. We'll have to have you back. Yeah, for, we definitely for, will. For a second episode, we definitely didn't get all the questions answered we wanted to. Yeah, well, thanks, guys. I mean, again, it's it's great what you guys are doing um, with West Michigan sports and the, and the West Michigan Conference. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about, hey, West Michigan Conference, you know, realignment next year. We could probably talk about that for an hour. For sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, thanks again, guys. This is great. Yeah, yeah, great job, Drew. Thank you. And a uh, special thank you to our sponsors, Van Dyke Mortgage, Shepherd and Shepherd Law, and North Grove Brewers. We appreciate you guys. Couldn't do, couldn't do this without you. So thank you so much for joining us for episode 20 in the Catch Mark Sports Night Podcast, and we'll see you guys next time. Go green. Later. Go white.